this is the follow-up video of FGO team overview you can see there it's not really necessary to watch the video to understand what I'm seeing here but if you take your time and watch it I highly appreciate it in this video I will mainly talk and develop about the farming setups I've mentioned and I will also talk about what members of Starlink provided to the team because I totally forgot to talk about it. All the setups I mention here can be improved by unlocking a pen skill 2 on your DPS. It's specifically visible in Buster Looping, but it has some good uses in every single farming systems in general. FGO is famous for three types of node we can farm. 333, 331, and 113. Multicore is technically able to deal with all of them, but I will focus my setups on a budget for this one, because looping is already so limited, so I feel like I have to balance it out. There is two setups, one to clear most of the free quests, and the second one able to clear the last node in EXP and QP. Those setups will feature free servants or at least really accessible servants. And even if you can see a 5 star in it, you don't have to worry that much. The lineup is Arash, Sparacus, Waver, Kyohime, and Shakespeare. The three bronze servants are obtainable through FP Gacha while Kiyohime is a free reward once you clear Orléans Singularity. Lastly, there is Waver. He is free thanks to the 6th anniversary slash start dash ticket. If you didn't pick him, which is totally understandable and fine, you might be able to see him more frequently in the Gaster Spot more than Merlin or Skadi. All the bronze servants and Kiyohime will need to have their rank ups done because it will help them do more damage or have access to their batteries. Moving on to craft essences option. There is three of them that are really really good and mandatory. Either it's Kaleidoscope, Home Night Supper or a Golden Car. You can run with a lot of Buster Looping Craft Essences because this team features a lot of Buster Base Servants. So Ariel Drive round and round, Partake with the King, for Sunrise or Gemstone Shots are really good options. But Devilish Body Sattva is a very good Craft Essence on my boy Arash. As for the supports, Caldea Lunchtime, Caldea Tea Time are super solid. And since this team features a lot of Buster Servants, Ox Demon King is also really strong. Here is what you should do in farming. In the first wave, Waver will give 20% to both Arash and Sparagus. Then Arash will use his battery to be able to fire his MP. Then you move to the second wave, where Kiyohime enters the field. Sparacus will use his battery and then his buster buff before firing his MP. The third wave, you swap Sparacus out for Shakespeare. Shakespeare and Waver will use their battery on Kyohime. You use the buster buffs available before she fires her MP to maximize her damage. The second setup able to farm the last EXP and QP node features Lubu. He is the only servant in multi-core setups who isn't really free, but he is 3 star which means he can be summoned really easily. In terms of gameplay it's pretty similar to the first one, the only thing that changes is Lubu using his buffs before firing his MP. Now it's time to talk about one of the teams I've played the most in this game, Quick Looping. The standard lineup is Toscadi and the Looper. A few servants can fill the Looper spot and here's a few. Orvati and Valkyrie are the most recent ones, then there is Lancelot and Atalanta. They were basically revitalized when Quick Looping existed. And finally, if you are feeling really extra fancy, you could go with Edmond Dantes. 
moving on to the craft distances every farming system plays their mandatory tax but there is some good hybrid craft essences for quick looping as well the problem is their limited status but here is a few example nice of marines trace of christmas past crimson teacher's pointer and cherry icicle are really good the only current option available is a max limit broken imaginary number attribute when it comes to the support it's pretty standard you could go for bonus bone points ce's or scadis bone 10 ce in the first setup you will need mage association in case of something going bad kaleidoscope to scadis and a looper the first wave your dps will be charged with kaleidoscope and mage association they get buffed by Scotties and then the NP. Wave 2 and Wave 3, it's just a matter of charging your DPS up, firing their NP and repeating the process. The second setup is more demanding because you will need Caldea Combat Uniform, Hybrid CE, two Scotty, a third Charger and a Looper. In Wave 1, on your field, there will be your Looper, Scotty, and the third Charger. The third Charger will charge your DPS to 100, you swap him out for Scotty, then you use your quick buffs on them, they use their personal buffs before firing their MP. Wave 2 and Wave 3 are again a matter of charging your DPS to 100 and firing the MP. Art Looping is next. Surprisingly, most of the loopers are from summer events like Jeanne d'Arc, Musashi, Yara, Kama, and a few that aren't really summer servants like Vritra, Orioma, or Space Seastar. There is some budget options as well, like Antonio Salieri, Yaison, or Fion McCumhair. Then there is Chen Gong. Loopers aside, there is not many good hybrid CEs for art looping. There is a few like Demonic Sun Princess or Ocean Flyer. The only other options aside from the mandatory tax might be Black Rail. And for the supports, it's basically the same. The first setup, the first wave, you will charge your DPS to 100, buff them and NP. With 2 and 3, you basically repeat the process. If you run with Black Rail, make sure your DPS has a 50% battery and a third charger. Then, pretty similar. You charge your DPS to 100, buff them, then NP. Wave 2, you repeat the process. In Wave 3, you swap one of the Castoria out for the third charger, and then you repeat the process again. Then there is Chen Gong farming. It's really special because it sacrifices the leftmost servant of your team, so you will need to have one more charger compared to the other art setups every single time. If you run with a 50% gauge CE, you will need two Casoria and a third charger, and if you go with Black Grail, you will need two Casorias and two 50% chargers. Finally, let's talk about Buster Looping setups. The first version has two setups and the same goes for the second version. Starting with the few servants that are able to loop. We have Space Ishtar, Ibuki Doji, Artoria, both Saber and Lancer, Morgan and Francis Drake. All the CEs featured there are the same as the budget multicore setup, so I highly recommend going back in time to look at them before we continue. The first setup is less damaging, but I find it really fun to play around cooldown reduction. The first wave, your DPS will be buffed by Korean Skyas, they use their personal buffs as long as it's not a battery, and then the NP. Wave 2, your DPS will use their battery and one of the coins and one of the coins Kaya will do the same before firing their MP. In wave 3, Coins Kaya will use her battery, then you use your Eye of Magic skill, 
your DPS should be able to use their battery again, so you do it before they fire the key. The second setup is more damaging and closer to what's currently used in the 2.0 version of Buster Looping. You will need Caldea Combat Uniform, Hybrid CE, your Looper, with or without their append skill 2, and a third charger. Wave 1, your DPS will use his battery to go to 100, then he gets buffed and he fires his MP. In Wave 2, both Grand Skyas will use their battery on your DPS, enabling them to fire their MP. In Wave 3, your DPS battery should be back up, you use it, you swap Grand Sky for a third charger, you charge your DPS, and then the MP. The 2.0 version is really similar to what I just said, the only difference in the setup is it opens up to 30% DPSs, and it also depends on if you have a pen skill 2 max or not. If you don't have it, you have to run with Kaleidoscope. If you have it, you can run with a hybrid craft essence, and it will make your life easier in general. It's the weird moment of the video where I'll talk about stalling. I will give you a small list of who were there and what they brought to the team. So we had Mash who only brought defense to the team, Waver who gave defense, charge and tempo with charge loss. Jean was able to give tempo and invincibility plus some healing. Merlin was there for invincibility, charge and healing. And Hans, Iris Field, Media Lily were there specifically to heal people. Hamamonomai was in the team because she had a great synergy with them. She loves art centric teams. She also had a heal, charge, and she also brings tempo to the mix. That's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoy it. I will see you in the next one. Bye.